Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Slab Stocks Card Market Report. We are here for the February edition. My name is Lou. I am joined, as always, by the man behind Slab Stocks, the legend himself, Aaron. Say hello to everybody. What's up, What's everyone? been on your mind? Uh, pumped to be back for another market report and uh, pretty exciting stuff. I think a lot of a lot of stuff's happening at one time right now. And I don't know about you, Lou, but it feels like that there's a, definitely more card interest right now than there was towards the end of 2022. I completely agree. I think it's like the most um, positive I've felt about like where cards themselves are in a, in a pretty decent amount of time. Yeah, I, I agree. It's an extremely fun, uh, fun time and lots of new sports. Uh, Starting up between baseball and F1, we'll talk about that today, uh, especially some baseball to start. And then we'll also look at a couple different things just in the market itself and a new set that released too. So super excited. And it might as well just hop right into starting a baseball to take one. Uh, this was uh, mostly written and just about all the way written by none other, none other than uh, Slab Sacks Nate. Dana Shout out Slab Sacks Nate. Himself. Uh, not here with us today, but he did provide some good information. And uh, first off, we we just look take a look at the, uh, the new rules in baseball this year because Lou... I feel like that this could possibly turn some um, casual fans like myself or even just people who aren't fans at all into actual fans because like, I could never sit there and watch a baseball game if it wasn't the Brewers or a playoff game. I just, just like – if it's just some random, you know, Red Sox, Astros, I'd be like, there's no way I'm watching that. Um, takes way too long, get too invested uh, to really, I don't know, just sit there and watch not, nothing in my opinion other than maybe a home run or two. But yeah. uh, let me hear your thoughts on all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, the fandom part is whatever. Like, people get – for some reason, baseball purists get very upset when you talk about, like, shortening the length of a game and, like, having people who wouldn't normally watch a baseball game watch a baseball game. It's like you're tailoring the sport to people who don't like it. It's like, well, that's, like, everything. Like, everything is tailored around trying to get casual people to continue to engage with your thing. So, and Otherwise, I just – your thing dies. Your thing dies. Your thing dies or it just stays, like, as stale as it always has been. Um, but I don't even want to get into that because people get emotional about baseball and I understand that because I get emotional about baseball too. But from a strictly like gameplay standpoint, number one, I think it's better for everyone that these games are over in two and a half hours, two and a half to three hours rather than four and a half, five hours. Only it, but, uh, the part that drives me nuts is like the only reason it was that way is because there was just no reason to change it. And the second that you change it, people get upset. Just wild to me. Anyway. I do think the, there is a new level of skill involved in this stuff, right? Like the pitchers who master the 20-second strikeout, like the clip we've been seeing the last couple of days, that's going to be a real skill. And the batters who are able to stand in and stay ready are also going to take advantage of that as well. Yeah, that's the wild thing to me is that, like, you know, you think about other big rule changes and, like, the NBA back when they had the three-point line, and that completely changed the way that certain people played the game or certain people couldn't play the game. And, like, to me, it's, like, this is a whole new element of skill, as, as you said. And also, it will make um, – I, I wonder how pitchers feel about it in particular because, as we've seen over the last, like, 10 years, you know, runs constantly going down each year, batting average constantly going down each year as these pitchers get so much better and, you know, hitters are looking to hit home runs and stuff. But now banning the shift and adding this pitch clock, you know, is making, I think, a lot of uh, interesting things um, – for statistic, think, pur statistic purposes, really, like there's going to be a lot of players who were not that good the last couple of years because of the shift who now are really good. Hopefully Christian Yelich is really good again and not not the same power capacity, but just like valuable to the Brewers. Yeah, I think that is the shift one is kind of getting uh, like swept under the rug because of the pitch clock thing. I think the shift is going to have a massive impact on the day to day baseball world yeah. and like stats and i think players like you're saying players are going to come out of nowhere who joey gallo might hit like 265 this year which would be a gigantic improvement for him you know yeah because he was like a what, 220 hitter or something like that most if years. that i think he was like a 198 hitter for a while <laughs> no i mean for real though it will it will make for some for some uh interesting statistical comparisons and even like juan soto being one of the best players in baseball could be then the best player in baseball things like that like you're on average extremely yeah, Jordan Alvarez, too. I mean, the crazy thing is that his stats were so good, and he did get shifted on also. He gets shifted like crazy, and he still has some of the best stats. That's like that's the kind of stuff that's going to be really weird. Yeah, and, and I think that there could be some people who were able to forecast, let's say, you know, some collectors bought some cards of some guys knew that these rule changes were coming, that maybe, you know, bounce backs are imminent. I don't know if it's Yelich. I don't know if Jordan Alvarez does win an MVP because there is no shift, you know, whatever it is. Like, 
He didn't win it. No, he didn't win MVP. He was close, right? One he, of these years. No, I mean uh, last well, year he was stuck behind. The, yeah, Otani it's tough. And Judge the last couple of years were yeah kind of run away. Um, either way, it'll be exciting to see. Uh, give me a little scroll down here. The other thing about spring training being here, and this happens every single year, is that certain prospects that do well in their first kind of look at um, some major league baseball games, or if you're a guy like Garrett Mitchell, you played last year for the Brewers. Now you're going to be a rookie this season. Um, if you do well, your cards can go up quite quickly, and uh, especially Ronnie, Mar- Ronnie Mauricio there, um, New York Mets uh, shortstop, I believe he is. Uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Lou. But um, he got some of his first action this year and hit a couple home runs, it already looks like, which has helped his uh, Purple Refractor Auto BGS 9.5 increase 73% up to $380 in just one month, which is quite the gain in that short of period of time. Uh, myself, extremely excited about Garrett Mitchell. Lou, is there any prospects you know that are kind of making it up this year that you're excited about? I know you're not as huge into the prospects. Yeah, I'm not as aware as I used to be. I think the guy that comes to mind immediately, yeah, he'll switch positions to get traded. Yeah, that's correct. The yeah. thing with the thing I wanted to say about Mauricio was he's having this awesome spring, but I don't think he's going to be playing this year for the Mets with any regularity. So um, the only prospect that comes to mind immediately off the top of my head um, is probably like Volpe. Like he's been really, really good for the Yankees since the spring started. I don't think I'm breaking any news to anybody here, but Anthony Volpe is a pretty good player and probably somebody you should be looking into. Um, but yeah, I'm just not as tuned into the prospect as I used to be. Got you. And yeah, Jay did point out that he'll switch positions or get traded with Lindor at shortstop. Yeah, he'll probably go to the outfield or something. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, like Lou said, like some of these guys, like Heston Kier said too, I'm not, like, remember, Nate wrote this section. I'm not, like, day-to-day looking at this stuff as much as Nate, and Nate would have this answer. But, like, not all these guys are going to be playing the MLB. So, realistically, if you have some cards of these guys, to me, if you can make some profit on them even before the season starts – wouldn't be a bad idea. That's just in my thoughts. Um, I don't Definitely. Know you, like, and and I would also say like, this is something that happens every spring. There's, there's always going to be four to five prospects who are just red hot at the start of spring training and ultimately get sent down. Like I would, I don't know for sure, but I think all three of these guys will be sent down. Garrett Mitchell will play. He'll for sure play. Garrett, okay. Start. So he will play. Okay. Yeah, great. He, remember he played last year with the Brewers, like towards the end of the yeah, year. Yeah. Sorry, two sorry, guys sorry. are both more prospects. Um, but either way, yeah, you, you are you are correct there. If you keep on scrolling down, um, so so the Padres you got to talk about the Padres for a little bit. They just extended Manny Machado. Yep. Um, they signed Xander Bogarts. They have Juan Soto, whose contract is going to be coming up. They just extended Yu Darvish. They have supposedly Tatis. going after Otani. Are you serious? I think I saw that story. Yeah. So they've got Tatis, who's coming back for suspension. But literally, they have dished out so much money in free agency and contract extensions, this and that and the other, that, you know, Soto's the one who doesn't have a contract long-term yet. And he's expected to sign the highest contract in baseball. He turned down what would have been a record signing for the Nationals. Um, and I still expect him, at least I'd, I would expect that he will get the biggest contract that's ever happened. What do you think on him this season? Because I think when he went to the Padres, he wasn't as good at the right to start as people were hoping for. Um do you think that this is going to be the Juan Soto that we saw at the Nationals this year, or is it going to be a kind of another like, <laughs> oh, there's so many good guys? Because this is the best lineup he's ever played with now, by 100%. far. By far the best team he's ever played on. I hope he's awesome. Like, I love Juan Soto. That guy is by far, in my opinion, the most exciting player to watch in baseball, just for like a million different reasons. The way he hits, the way he acts on the field. Like, the, he's just awesome. So I hope he's great, but – the concern I always have with the Padres is like, what is their pitching going to actually look like? And how does that lineup hold together for an entire season? Yeah. Yeah. You can spend a lot of money, but it doesn't always work out. Look at Chelsea. Yeah. Um, I, I, by the way, uh, John Heyman and Bob Nightingale have both said that the Padres are all in and a serious threat to get Otani. <laughs> can you imagine them adding Otani? <laughs> they're, they're doing the, they're, I mean, that's pretty much what the angels do. They just spend a whole bunch of money on a gazillion guys and don't make the playoffs. Well, at least the Padres actually advanced in some series this last year. Yeah, I guess, but they ended up in the same place. Jay says, too bad he's going to the Mets. Could you imagine Otani in the New York market? That'd be crazy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. He'd be finishing second in the NL East every year. (laughs) Live with the chirps. Uh, Mike Trout. So Mike Trout, a decent amount of his cards have actually been seeing some action going into the new season. This is his uh, Cognac Diamond Anniversary PSN9 rookie here. It went from a little bit over $2,000 to now a little bit over $3,000 within a month. 
So Trout, I looked, Lou, he hasn't played over 130 games since 2019. Of course, one of those mm-hmm. years was COVID year, so no one played over 130 games. Yes. Uh, but two years in a row of not playing over 130. And I would still say that he's considered the greatest player of a generation type of yes. deal. But, but he's, with the injuries, as quickly started to play himself out of the, like, could be the greatest of all time. And I'd say three years ago, people were like serious about like, hey, he could be the greatest of all time. I haven't heard that conversation in a while now. Yeah, I was literally going to say to you, actually, when I was going through this, is there a little bit of like talking down on Mike Trout happening? Like, oh, a li- I, I would say so. A lot of people are like Julio, Soto, and even Tatis. That's Julio. wild to me. I, like, <laughs> I just don't understand. The guy hit 40 home runs in 119 games last year. It happens in every sport, every year throughout our entire lives it's it's the lebron effect it's the steph curry effect it's the patrick mahomes effect the, talking about michael trout is not the best player or at worst like a top two or three player in the league is banana land i can see the argument for otani being like the dude can do things that no one else can do you know and and, and like he, i think perennially he gets like kind of ranked as the best player in baseball now even if judge won the mvp had a great season last year it's still like otani's the guy but like mike trout i mean that guy's a stud, no matter what. Stud just has just has to stay healthy. Um, hopefully, he can play over 130 this year and see some insane output. That'd be nice to see. And then one guy in the New York market that's kind of throwing his name back into the spotlight here is Jason Dominguez. You know, mm-hmm. he had not a great start to his minor league career coming over from uh, as an international uh, prospect signee. But his cards are getting some action again. They're getting some serious action. Autos, even first mega box PSA tens, which is like 2,000 some pop of that, uh, up 20 percent in the last month. And I know he had a home run, I think, in his very first uh, action in a major league game being spring training. Yep. So I th- just a guy to watch, I'd say, because if you're talking about players that had maybe too much hype for no reason, you know, at least in the card market, selling for thousands of dollars, and he was like ranked like the 70th prospect in baseball or 50th or something like that. Yeah, well, he hits um, home runs really far. He does hit home runs very far. So we'll see <laughs> what happens there. And then I'm, I will yeah. say he, he has been apparently a lot better at the plate this this spring, which was a big thing for him. And his plate discipline getting better is a good sign. Yeah, so I mean, obviously a 19-year-old, either you go – there was a couple of guys I remember like – I can't – I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Kevin Kevin Mason or Kevin Maton or something like that from 2017. Maton. Maton. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He His stuff was so hype, bro, coming over as an international prospect, signing like 17 years old, and then nothing ever happened. Nothing. Not one thing. Um, at least Dominguez seems like he's kind of putting his name back into the, in the light. It's extremely hard to become a top-tier Major League Baseball player. Like yeah. extremely point zero 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 one percent of people. Yeah, I agree. And well, yeah, you know, even prospects too. Like, was it like seventy percent of prospects fail or something like that? Yeah, um, like how many guys? It, it, it's actually well, interesting. Isn't even like superstar, like just not making it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually interesting. I would love to see. I I don't exactly know how to visualize this properly, but like in the last three years, as the drafts have gotten smaller. How has that affected like the talent pools in the minors? I would love to understand that a little bit better. That's something I'm going to just yeah, make a note to look into too. this weekend. Um, all right, a little scroll out, and there is, yes, yeah, some cards you know that are not doing as well. Aaron Judge stuff has decreased, but that's to be expected. Expected, after. expected. I mean, gonna hopefully have another good year. Not, I know not you don't want him to have a good year, but just as a baseball, uh, for baseball fans, have another good year and card collectors. But Gavin Lux, man, torn ACL. Really brutal. brutal. They just let go in back-to-back free agencies, both Corey Seager and Trey Turner. Uh, well, actually, did they trade? No, no, it was free agency. Um, and then Gavin Lux was supposed to take the reins now. Wisconsin kid from Wisconsin. We followed him. We really were hoping he was going to get the shot. Tears his ACL off for the entire <laughs> season. His cards are already dropping price. Brutal. Weird injury, huh? I didn't see it because Nate says it's gross. I didn't really want to go and look it up. Yeah, it, it's not great. Did, did, was he like planting, turning like a double? Player it was like a football thing? injury. It was like when a guy plants and goes to make a move. And I've, I just, I don't think I've ever seen that on a baseball field before. Yeah, I mean, you, you barely hear of torn ACLs. Like maybe in an outfield, I heard of someone tearing ACL mm-hmm. in baseball, but like there's not running the bases. Yeah, there's that's, there's not as much lat- lateral movement. I mean, a lot of it's you know unlucky. Line. Yeah, really unlucky. All right, before we wrap up baseball, Lou, you tell me as you know, a huge baseball fan, <laughs> maybe watching the baseball car market here and there. How do you feel the baseball card market is right now in the overall landscape? I think it's the most steady of everything as it always has been and always will be. I just think baseball collectors are like the most like always here, always in the mix, always buying. There's always prospecting happening on every level and on in the pro side, there's always people involved. So the thing I like the most about baseball is that it's always liquid and it's always pretty steady. Yeah. 
I, I feel that. I feel like you don't see the big like plus forty percent over three months, and then I mean, other than like Aaron Judge and stuff, individual. There's players. only like individual, yeah, like standout crazy yeah. offs. But for the most part, I think it's the most predictable. Is probably not the right word, but the most uh, like similar action year over year. Yeah, you're because what you say is true. There's always something to do. There's always a new Bowman. Bowman set releasing, Bowman draft, Bowman Chrome. People are always looking at the new set, like in F1. Okay, we have one rookie last year. Now there's three rookies this year, but they won't get cards for a little bit. So it's just like a little bit more stale, although I love F1. But like not baseball, there's really three new prospects in sets every single year. Yeah. Um, and then the – yeah, I think that actually was all I had to add. Nothing more. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. We move on. We move on. Lou, talk to me about this. You texted me the other night, and I've been watching this set a lot. But we are going to be talking about some Bowman Chrome University. Obviously, a lot of chatter about this on social media. Um. You know, we made some posts about some of these cards, but you just give me your first take on this product in general, and we'll talk about more. I've just enjoyed watching it getting ripped. Um, I think the things I, mo- I like about it the most is how cheap it is relative to everything else that's out there. And obviously that's expected with college products all the time. Um, but I just love the combination of like the Bowman and like the licensed product. Like the idea of getting a Georgia card now for me is really, really interesting. It's something I hadn't had before, even when these guys were in college and, you know, were available for me to buy then something about that logo. I think that just changes it for me personally. So that's been my draw. Yeah, so the difference is for people who are wondering about this set versus last year's, maybe you would even know if there's a set last year. If you scroll down for a second here, the major difference is that 2021 Bowman University football, which is the first release of this product, did not have logos on it. It wasn't licensed. You see Bryce Young, there's no Nike logo, there's no SEC logo, there's no Alabama Crimson Tide, any of that stuff. Um, the release, it was new because there were still players who were still in college who had cards, being Bryce Young. That was the first time we really ever seen that with the new NIL, NIL deals. It allowed mm-hmm. that to happen so you could buy and sell Bryce, Bryce Young when he was playing for Alabama. Something we haven't seen before. Very cool concept, but the cards weren't licensed. So I think it kind of hurt the perception or at least the the viability of people really buying and selling him in season, different things like that. Now you see this year on the right there, that's the Super Factor Auto 1 of 1. It is licensed. There is Alabama logos. To me, the, the card just looks way better when the logos tie it together. And 100%. Bring, bring a lot more collectors in. But if you scroll down a little bit, something happened. Um, prominent collector, of course, Shine150. For those of you that uh, know him from Instagram, that's that's what he goes by. I'm sure you've heard of him before, at least checked out his page. Done big deals. So Luca logo man for 4.6 million is he the foremost like big time card collector i'd say yeah i I, you know you hear about the one you hear about the ones that are like oh they've got like the mickey mail psa 1052 tops plus all these other cool vintage cards but from like a day-to-day like actually posting people know who shine is yeah engaging in the community like like shine is i would say definitely the most prominent collector and like I know other people probably know of other people and have opinions, but Shine, to me, excellent individual, really is actually ing- ingrained in the community, loves cards, and he wanted to get some of the high-end cards out of the set. Uh, and so far, the Bryce Young has been pulled. He put $15,000 on the Bryce Young, $25,000 on the Caleb Williams, $10,000 on the CJ Strud. You look at those numbers, Lou, what do you think between 25, 15, and 10 on those three players? I don't know. It's hard for me to like react to the like numbers blindly. I mean – Honestly, do you think Caleb's the best out of those three guys? So here's the deal. Bryce Young, as of right now, is probably the best player. I know he's a little bit undersized. But to me, the Caleb Williams is a more important card because it is the only one of these three that has the first Bowman logo. He's coming off the Heisman victory. This is his first card ever. The other guys both had the nine license from last year. (laughs) Excuse me. So it kind of decreases the perception. The Caleb Williams, I think, is the chase of the set, no matter if it's the Super Factor Auto. I agree. The red, the whatever it might be, I think it's the chase, um, and and that's what we're seeing here with this bounty and and even in the sales values too, and it's just it's just a supply thing at that point also, and I think that he could win back to back Heisman's, and then you might see him also being drafted first overall. He's the projected number one pick for next year's draft, but the interesting thing is, and you can't keep on scrolling here too, is that I think that this will give us a new community to kind of join in the cards like. A lot of people who hate on this Bowman Chrome University product are the people who would hate on Panini Draft Picks because Panini Draft Picks would release their products like right before the NFL season started 
and try to sell them all and then start to release the NFL pro jerseys. And then all the draft picks cards become not valuable at all because they just released the pro jerseys, like right on the back of releasing all the college jerseys. This product is totally different. Yes. Bryce young is getting drafted this year, but there's a ton of players in here who are still going to be in college and going forward. It'll be even more like that to where you can actually buy and sell these guys while they're playing college football. There's a lot of college football fans from Alabama, Nebraska, Idaho, different States that don't have professional teams. Like mm-hmm. people in Georgia are obsessed with the Bulldogs. I don't even, you know, maybe they're saying about like a lot of Bulldogs fans versus Falcons fans to where like that's a whole new group of people who can get exposed to cards and collect cards and buy and sell them that maybe didn't care at all about a professional team. Yeah, I just think it's another thing for people to like support their teams with. Like I don't, I don't really know what the argument against Bowman University. I, you you mentioned it, but I just don't totally get it the people yeah people just hate on it because they're like oh it's not nfl jersey they'll have nfl jersey cards at some point but like if a killer there's gonna be a player who who is like i was texting you about last night like some person on wisconsin who is like a fan favorite is gonna get a card in the set people are gonna want to collect it and they're not necessarily gonna be an nfl player and have prison how about this stetson bennett yes people in georgia will buy and sell his cards all day but or want georgia legend want to collect them but like he might not do anything in the nfl ever you know but he'll still have value just like tim tebow still has a ton of value for never really doing a whole yeah like I, if he, I wonder at here's a great that's a perfect example what do you think would sell for more money today a tim tebow broncos card or a tim tebow florida card I yeah, don't probably answer. probably a high-end florida card all day yes exactly um and the other thing too it's like there'll be full seasons where you can buy and sell these guys in season. And there's going to be players in here who you didn't think were good and then become good. And like, that's just like, I'm not going to go to the point where it's like, these are just like Bowman Chrome baseball prospects because we know that's different. However, they airbrush all the, all the picks, all the jerseys onto the, those prospects. It's not like that. They're actually in their Milwaukee Brewers jersey. You know, it's like they're playing for the Brewers when they get those cards. That's still their first card here. And I think there'll be some action on it. So I agree. That, that's what I've got for the set. Um, I know it's not for everyone, but I think it's a, a good. Wow. You see the sales? Yeah. Those are big time sales. <laughs> 1200 for red out of five non auto of Caleb Williams. Boxes are what, like 130 right now? Um, yeah. And Super Fractor Auto. Of, I don't even know who uh, Nico Martial is, I think that says, or Marquial. I don't okay. know who that is, but I'm not a crazy college football fan other than the Badgers. <laughs> um, and then Caleb Williams Auto Gold out of 50 sold for 600. So interesting sales nonetheless. Definitely. All right, moving on, moving on. We've got take four or three here. So if you want, hop on to, and of course we can say this at the start, but 137pm.com is where you can read all about this market information, going a little bit deeper. Um, this kind of shows the differences between Slabs X100, which we talked about last episode. Make sure to listen to the last episode. Carlyer 50, a couple of the other market, uh, uh, financial markets and stuff. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, you can actually see where there's a breakdown of some of the biggest trenders and droppers in the Slab Sox 100. Um, I can just name the players here. You can read about their stats and why, though. Uh, Devin Booker, Jacob DeGrom, and Crosby all had some, a nice February, which is mm-hmm. funny because DeGrom was actually our dropper or our who's not hot in uh, January. But here, but it makes is. sense that we're coming back out of the baseball season. Exactly. And then if you scroll a little bit more, literally all the biggest drops are in the football card market, which is pretty expected. Big Playoffs sports. end, Super Bowl ends, people immediately turn to something else. Like, so wait, have you done the first vote yet? So, no, the first vote has not happened yet. The first vote, to make it clear, we have actually put vote. it in April because I wanted to leave a full quarter, like quarter one. I want Smart. quarter one to close before we do like a, a vote and see which you know what people think on it. So be, make sure to look out for that. Um, Slabsocks.com is where you can sign up for the Daily Slab Newsletter where, where the vote and the survey will be happening for the Slabsocks 100. Uh, just to wrap up today, we've got two more topics. Very briefly, a look at F1 is back. Lou, did you know what first practice was this morning? Practice one, practice two for the first race? I did know that. Thank you. Have you seen any of the numbers? No, I have not. Okay, well, you know, it's a practice session, right? But Fernando Alonso went second in practice session one and first in practice session two. And he was really good in preseason testing. So it's going to be extremely exciting to see him with Aston Martin this year. They have made great strides, and Alonso has moved from Alpine to Aston Martin, which a lot of people question the move because Aston Martin's kind of been um, the clown show for a little bit here with the strolls and stuff and and not doing well, and Vettel wasn't doing well. But maybe Fernando Alonso takes him back to the t- – or takes himself back to the top with them. We'll see. There's – wait. So Aston Martin's like near the top this year. Is that what's happening? They, they very well could be the fourth best team this year. Last the year, fourth they, best team. Okay. Yeah, so they would pass Alpine, pass McLaren. 
Well, and McLaren's in the tank. And oh, McLaren's trash, bro. They've been terrible. And they just got Oscar Piastri as a rookie this year. I think they're going to probably finish like they finished fifth last year. They probably finished sixth this year. No, I, it sounds like they're like at the bottom of the grid. Well, okay. Yeah, no, the year like they have not done well at all. But I maybe they finished behind Alfa Romeo too. Maybe they finished at seventh then because Alfa Romeo's pretty dang good. Did you hear my hot take on Car Talk this week? No, I didn't. What is it? Uh, my take is that Lando Norris will be on Alpine this time next year. That just makes no sense. Why? How's that, hap- how's that happen? Why? Tell well, me. Gasly why. just signed like a two-year contract. With them and okay. Esteban Ocon. I I know that you can get bought off. Con- well, just tell me why would he be on Alpine? I'm more curious about. My that. thought is that McLaren is a disaster scene, and they are widely hated based on the show that I watched. Drive to Survive, Drive to Survive season five. My take was like people really don't like McLaren, yeah. and I think that Lando will want out after this year. I don't. I don't think people like uh, Zach Brown. You know, the American I, that's guy. That's what I'm saying. I think people don't like him, and I think it's a problem. And if they're going to be really bad, like Lando's going to get frustrated. They they already got rid of Ricardo. What's the excuse this year? Yo, I, I don't disagree with you, Lando, maybe looking at, at greener grass, but I think it'd be maybe like a Red Bull where like Checo would be gone. Red Bull is the other one, yes. I, I don't I don't think that Alpine I don't think that he would well it's it would be better than McLaren, but I can't see him like settling for a move to Alpine when he could physically have a seat at a top three team. He's like that talented himself. I guess that's fair. Red Bull is like a is like a more sexy pick, but yeah. Yeah. I just think McLaren's are in a really bad spot right now. That I don't think that you'll find disagreement from anyone there yeah. for sure. Um, blaming Daniel Ricardo for it, but if him and Piastri are both bad this year, then who do you blame then? Look, I better look at yourself, I guess. Zach Brown better resign. So, not I don't, I don't know about that. Brown out, <laughs> brown out. Uh, give me a little scroll down here. So, there's been some big sales for the new 2022 Tops Chrome F1 set. Lou, I don't know how much you interacted with the set. We've not ripped a yet. lot, we ripped a lot of it. Um, Way better than 2021. 2021, the design was hideous for, uh, in my opinion, all products. And this design looks so much better for like an F1 set. It's got the logo and the bomb. It's got like the cool lines behind it and the carbon fiber. It just lends itself to F1. Do you like it? I don't love it. He doesn't love it. I don't love it. But it's better. It's better than last year. I agree. It's okay. better than last year. I I don't understand why they're using these like headshots the portraits yeah well so you you can get different cards in the set obviously you can get but these are the main cards these are the main cards because like you could select a different image for like the main card. I just like take you down a notch a little bit that's my bad i didn't mean to do that no no i'm just saying all of them look a little different if you were to have different photos like this is a standard it's like a standard like the portrait for all of them i guess is what i say is how i see it now I get it that it's like, it, it, here's my th- thought. You see them intro F1 every single race. It's like the intro are, screen. Standing yeah. there, holding their arms. Max is like this. Like it's kind of like that. That's how I see it. But then you have all these other sick cards that they make, which are much more affordable. Like the Ricardo card from 2022 Tops Chrome, where it's got his visor and all the reflection off of it is so sick. Like they make. That, yeah, really that's what cool. I mean. Like I wish there was more of like a them on the track, them in the well, car. Well, they do have them on the track. There's not as valuable or the main thing. But that should be – I my opinion is that should be the main card. He thinks that should be the main card. Okay, maybe Lou should, Lou, pick for, Lou should pick out his favorite photo for each driver and make that the main card for each driver. I don't hate that idea. Let me be in control. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, but, yeah, Super Fractor Checo sale at $6,100. That's his autograph. Lewis Hamilton portrait red out of 5, 3,500. Max SGC 1010 refractor auto at 3,200. Um, if you scroll down here, it compares it to some of the other top F1 sales from February – these are all 2020 cards, all much more valuable, all much more sought after. I'm sure Lou would say that this is his favorite set, which a lot of people would say. I would say, too. Um, $17,400 on that Lewis purple there. I know you remember that card. Um, we've got the Leclerc red out of five there for $16,400, which is wild to me. It's raw. After two years, it's still raw. A red out of five of Leclerc. I mean, it's be a low grade, huh? It has to be a, like a it has to lower. be. It's been submitted like twelve times. You would probably slab it if it was like a seven or eight at least. Yeah. And then you've got the printing plate, which is from Topps Chrome Leclerc there for ten thousand eight hundred dollars. BGS nine point five. So some big sales outside of the uh, twenty twenty two stuff. Can and, I? Uh, look, wait, can we talk F one for like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't gonna move on yet, but let's hear it. Where are you? Like, what are you thinking? So I am very excited. 
for a new season. Um, I think starting fresh is good because at least last year, the first few races, like, oh my gosh, Ferrari won three races, like going to have a crazy season, you know, halfway through it all switched. But yeah. um, I'm just excited to have a clean slate. I'm I'm personally very excited for Gasly to be an Alpine. That was such a big move for his career. Alpha Tori clearly is just the, uh, you know, test and figure out things for a Red Bull team is how I see it. Um, not not get the budget. They really started to go downhill bad from where they were a few years ago. So being Alpine's amazing, and I hope he, you know, has a top ten year. He's like, in my opinion, one of the best drivers outside of the the main guys. And it would be a I disappointment want- if he wasn't top ten, right? Oh, it would be a dis- it'd be a big yeah. disappointment if he wasn't top ten. So I, I but last year he wasn't because of how bad Alpha Tori was. So I'm just saying mm-hmm. I want to really see him get back into there and be in the mix for maybe top five finishes this year if seems, everything goes well in some races. Seems like Red Bull's title to lose, right? It is Red Bull's title to lose that they had the best testing. Um, but it's unfortunate. We'll we'll see. I mean, I, I want Mercedes to get back in, in the mix bad. I love Lewis and George. They're they're probably my you know, like I, I like Gasly the most, but if I have a team that I want to cheer for to win races, it's gonna be Mercedes of anyone. Um, Courtney said, I think Leclerc is a contender for a championship. I think we're all saying that because it's like something we want to happen, but it doesn't seem like it's actually going to happen. Well, you never know. I mean, new principal this year, no more clown show. Maybe the strategy gets fixed. Maybe the reliability is better. I think, hey, I'll say this. It will be closer than last year. I will say this. It'll be closer than last year. In my opinion, it maybe it doesn't happen. But like last year got way off hand fast with all the re- reliability issues and strategic issues from ferrari why can't i find futures for this season this f1 season i don't know weird try, try to bet on what clerk to win i mean duh <laughs> <laughs> i like it i like it um lewis did come on and say though he said even if this year doesn't go as well as you know they're hoping for he's still gonna be still gonna be racing uh mercedes for years to come so that's good to see i mean I don't years to come he said dude they sound like a three-year contract i think I thought he. I, I don't understand him. I like Lewis a lot. He's an interesting dude. I like him. I think he's a great guy. Every single time he gets interviewed, well, obviously he's a great guy. He's like one of the best guys around. But he just has like an interesting brain. Like I thought he was finished, and then I thought he was done with Mercedes. But if he's saying I'm racing for years to come with Mercedes, no matter yeah. what happens this year, is that seems like a different tone. No, bro. He wants about. that record. Exactly what Courtney's saying. He wants another one. He's hungry still. He definitely wants to get the eighth because he should have had the eighth. And uh, I think he'll get it. I think he'll get it. It might not be this year, but I think by at least the next two years, he'll get another one. Well, if they keep figuring out that Max and Red Bull are cheating, then maybe they'll just get rid of them and then (laughs) ban them for life. (laughs) All right. uh, Last topic here, if you're good with the F1 talk, is um, a little bit of F1. uh, No, we talked about F1. A little bit of all-star break from the NBA, just to throw some basketball chatter in there. Damian Lillard has been insane. Multiple. Excuse me. He just became a uh, sole possession third all time for sixty plus point games in the NBA at a seventy one point performance, tying down and Mitchell from this season. Yet he did it in regulation time. He was like twelve for twenty two from the three point line or something like that. Insane, and uh, or thirteen for twenty two. And yes, his cards are increasing in the right direction this month. However, you know pr- probably the biggest uh, name of February would be Mac McClung winning that slam dunk contest. That was by far the best slam dunk performance I've seen since Zach Levine and uh, Aaron Gordon days. No question, one of the best that's that's happened, and it's ext- it is extremely impressive what he did. Um, now the card market for him, if you're wondering about his cards, yeah, they went insane. We have a link to our Instagram reels we did. He actually had his all time high sale for his Nebula Prism Collegiate Auto. It sold for like I think it's three thousand dollars. It was um, that card is not worth that much today. No. Um, yeah, three thousand dollars it was, and just like prison base rookie selling it crazy. I remember it was like you know, thousand sales or something in the last couple of weeks, something nuts like that. So there's always those guys that you never know you might have in your shoe boxes if you still keep cards and shoe boxes in your closet that uh, you just pull them out one day, look at them, and then say, hey, there's a ten dollar Mac McClung now that used to be literally a penny well i feel like matt mcclung is going to be like the official dunk contest winner for the next couple of years so you should just put those away until every february and you pull them back out again <laughs> yeah exactly keep it keep them in storage uh did you know and that's not a shot like, that's a cool did, job to have did you know McClung. who he was before he was going to be in this dunk contest this year yeah I, i've known who matt mcclung was because of like youtube and Instagram. okay so because like for myself too i've started watching his dunk highlights like you know five years ago or more when yeah. he was in high school a lot of people were like oh he 
literally, I just heard this guy for the first time on Twitter and stuff. I'm like, how is it even possible? Like, he was a decent player for like Texas Tech and Georgetown too. He was decent. He's always been a dunker. But if you're not one of these yeah. people who's like an online person, if you're not seeing these dunks, you wouldn't really know who he is, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess there's a difference between like even Twitter, had, the engagement's been much higher over the last few years and like five years ago when it was like his Hoops McTapes is on YouTube. You know, like that maybe didn't make its way to Twitter yet anyways. Right. So, you know, it's understandable. And also on the Dame stuff, like Dame's great. Dame's awesome. They're 12th in the West. <laughs> They're close. That West race is really close, bro. It's like all within three games right now or four I mean, it's games. It's not maybe. that close. I guess it's the, yeah. No, it's, and when I say within four games, I mean from five to 12. I'm not saying from like nine to 12 or eight to 12. Yeah, they're four games back of the five seed, so I take it back. Yeah, no, it, it's all extremely five close. Five games back of the four seed. That's crazy. <laughs> no, no, it's, it, yeah, exactly. It's nuts. It's crazy. So it, the West will be a very fun race to figure out. I think some teams will elevate and some teams will fade away. Uh, Warriors are elevated at the right time. They just won four straight games, um, which doesn't sound crazy, but they were not doing well this year. I think they're elevated at the right time. Curry's coming ha- – is even back. As they back. do. He's back this Saturday, exactly. Um, I was kind of downing them on our slab sacks live on Monday. I said, I don't know. I think the Clippers will be better. Ever since I said Clippers have lost four straight and the Warriors have won four straight. So, yeah, I've looked like I think it's the now. Sons of the Warriors in the West. You think so? Yeah. Who in the East? No one other than Boston and, and Milwaukee. It's impossible, I feel like, for it to be. Somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say Boston, but Milwaukee. It feels out. like we might be heading towards a Boston uh, Golden State rematch. No way, bro. As long as a devastating injury doesn't happen, Bucks have won 16 straight. No one's talking about because people hate Milwaukee. Everyone just loves the. No coach. one hates Milwaukee, Aaron. You, I got you guys are on the East people Coast. Courtney's on the West Coast, and here I am in Milwaukee. Everyone hating on the inner middle mid, uh, West and. Yeah, I'm sick of it. So but, yeah, I, I Milwaukee... just can't I can't imagine explaining to you how little I hate the city of Milwaukee. <laughs> it's only Steve A. Smith. Uh no, we I think that we have one of the deepest teams in the NBA since the two thousand late two thousand and nine times with like the Lakers and Celtics. Our team is insanely deep. I cannot wait for this NBA playoffs. But if I have to make some picks, uh I'll go Nuggets and Warriors in the West matching up if the seating works out that way. And then the Warrior, uh, no Nuggets. I think I think the Nuggets will do it, dude. I think Jokic has got this quiet chip on his shoulder. Everyone's hating him right now for whatever reason because he hasn't won a title yet. But I think he'll get there. I think the Bucks will get there. Bucks and Nuggets. Um, I don't see the Suns making it, but I would I would welcome a Bucks and Suns rematch. I like to beat them again. What do you think the favorite in Vegas is for NBA Finals matchup? Like, what do you think is the most bet on matchup, or not the most bet on the highest odds? Um, is it what you said? Celtics Warriors? No, it's not. Okay, Bucks and Suns. No, it is Celtics Suns. Second is Celtics Nuggets. Third is Bucks Suns. That's okay. I know the the Celtics have had a good season. Uh, it's okay. It's got to be pretty close. Though. I mean, it has to be pretty close between all. The- uh, I mean, the Celtics are plus two eighty, and the Bucks are plus four forty. So it's a pretty decent difference. Yeah, that's a they're decent second bet. though. All right. Well, that's okay. I don't need to be the favorite. We didn't, we were the third seed when we won the finals. Two there years you go. Ago. Way to be, exactly. kid. All right, Lou. Uh, if you scroll down, you have just you know you got some soccer action. Marcus Rashford's been amazing for those soccer fans out there, like myself. They just won the uh, Caribou Cup final, first trophy since 2017 for United. Ben Simmons is absolutely in the mud, uh, card wise right <laughs> now. And <laughs> I mean, six, seven points per game, six rebounds per game, six assists per game, and now he's got career low PER. And uh, yeah, not not looking great for the Nets either. And bunch of shows in March, tons of shows. Go read the article. Final. Find a local show near you. Um, we are. I'm actually leaving for Shipshawana like literally right after this episode is recorded. Very excited about that. And then there's some more coming throughout the rest of the month. I'm going to and a then, show in Woodbridge, New Jersey tomorrow. That is not on this list. Ooh. But that's okay. Should... It's a small show. It's not a big deal. Okay. Got you. Well, small shows are good. Trust me. Yes. Small shows can be really good. So make sure you find your small shows too. And then uh, important product releases, there's like 20 of them listed. So go feel free to read through them. Uh, and uh, enjoy some card ripping. What did you think about the uh, industry conference stuff? They're getting rid of some products. Yeah, yeah. So that that will probably make it into uh, next month's article, given that mm-hmm. that just kind of happened the last couple of days here. Yeah. Um, they're getting rid of like eight or like six baseball products, which I think is a good idea. Um, a bunch of products that just don't matter. <laughs> so do not matter. If, if if there's no reason for the product, cut it. I'm glad they're doing that. Uh, some Brownie James autographs coming next year. 
to Topps Chrome All America. Uh, I feel All like American. that's a really big deal. That is a really big deal. It's a huge deal. How I mean, did he get... not go to Upper Deck? I don't know, man. Or maybe he still will because it's the McDonald's. It's different. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Because they probably have rights to maybe certain things. Tops versus Upper. Yeah, who knows? Um, and then the other news, I guess, was Tom Brady getting a baseball card, which he never had, although he was drafted by the Expos. So, yeah, that's people are freaking out about uh, that. I that's think become the new Santa Claus downtown. Yeah, but if if it's like an on card like first Bowman with some type of like not cheesy picture, I could actually see it fetching massive money. It's definitely gonna get massive money no yeah. matter what happens for sure. Yeah. My question is the photo is gonna be everything. It has to be a cool picture. Because like an here's, old here's cool... the deal. Like, is there a legit photo of Tom Brady? Like, I can't tell what's a Photoshop mock up here or not, you know? Yeah, probably everything that we're seeing on Google is a mock-up. But... I'm sure. So, like, my, my question, it's, like, we don't have him actually, like, playing in the, you know, whatever it might be, trials or whatever with, with the Expos. So, they better have a, a good photo for that. I agree. A great stat was he is – he was the last professional athlete that was drafted by the Montreal Expos. That is a really fun fact. That's a great fact, right? That's a party fact right there. <laughs> yeah. I got excited when I saw that. I, like I love that. stuff like that. I like it. Well, thanks for sharing it. I guess that maybe we should end it right there. Yeah. All right. Fine. Wait, real quick. Panini Prison Football, big deal. Prison Premier League, oh. big deal. McDonald's All-American. I, I, suppose, I suppose I shouldn't gloss over the fact that my football fan over here on the other side of the screen. I, uh, I mean, like, this is Sauce Garner. This is Garrett Wilson. Like, no, this that's is, a big deal. I'm fired no. up. That's a big deal. Prison Premier League is will have Brighton will probably be the most expensive team in the set with rookies from Matoma and uh, Ferguson, um, and Caicedo. I think his Prison rookie will be in there, and Eminence Basketball at the end of the month from Super High End Chasers and, and Contenders then, um, Basketball, Contenders Basketball and Flawless and Flawless, and then also Dynasty Formula One just released. Uh, this is like a, a huge month, actually. Low-key. No, it is a big month. I should I I kind of made that a less big of a deal as it should be. This is a big month of releases. Lots of uh, big releases coming out. And also, uh, Bowman Chrome University basketball. So we talked about the football basketball sets coming March 15th, it says. That's like right as March Madness is just about starting, I think. So that could be a really, really fun set, Lou, for us to like look at sales and say, like, holy cow, this guy who is playing right now, dropping 30 in March Madness, his card is now sold for this because of this. Someone hits a We've buzzer beater in this buzzer beater in the Sweet 16 for Kentucky. Yeah. You know when I heard NIL was announced and that players could start to do these different types of things, my first m- mind was like, I can't wait for that first March Madness set. Now mm-hmm. it took like two and a half years for it to happen, and it's not called March Madness, but it'll be dropping like right before March Madness. So I'm pumped about this. I'm pumped. Yeah, that'll be great. It's exciting. Definitely. All right, we can wrap it up now. Definitely. All right. Move. It's been great. It's been fun. Um, if you got a chance, you made it this far, please like, please subscribe. As always, check out the report on 137pm.com. Follow Aaron. Follow myself. Follow Card Talk. Follow Slap Stocks. Do everything. Do it all. We appreciate you, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.